Hello! Welcome! Today I am going to be showing you a full nail from start to finish with C&D Plexi Gel and finished with a shellac negative art nail space design. So if you can see me and if everything is okay, let me know where you're from and if you're excited about using Plexi Gel. So my name is Noreen O'Connor. I'm an Irish EA and I am based in the very south of Ireland in County Cork. So we are going to be doing a Plexi Gel design for you today that I'm really excited about. It's going to be using some negative space nail art, which I think clients really love. I think negative space nail art designs always look fresher for longer. I can see a few of you starting to join. That's amazing. Give me a little comment. Let me know if you can see everything okay. Is the sound okay? How's the picture? Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hey, Rachel. How is the sound and the picture? Let me know, Pet. So we are going to be doing a really fun design for you today. It's going to be using two of the new C&D shellac colours. Um, so we're going to use a lovely kind of a blue and a nice little nudie colour. So I'm just going to wait a little minute or two and we'll flip you over and show you what we're doing. Thank you, Karen. Everything's good on your end. That's great. So we've got loads to do today because I'm going to show you everything from start to finish on how to do a plexi gel nail. So I think that um, will be great for some of you. I'm going to do quite a natural looking enhancement as well. Um, I don't know where you're all based, but I know in Ireland we tend to be a little bit more conservative with our nails. So I thought it might be interesting to show how you can use Plexi Gel to produce a really natural wearable enhancement for your clients. Because I know when I first started doing enhancements in the salon, a lot of clients would be like, oh, I don't know, do I want to wear enhancements? They feel so heavy, they look so unnatural. But with Plexi Gel, it, they feel like air. You really don't feel like you're wearing enhancements at all. So hopefully um, we can show you how to produce really nice natural enhancements. So there's a nice few of you now. So I'm actually just going to flip you over and show you what we're going to be working on today. So just one second. Okay, so we're going to be using the new C&D Plexi Gel from start to finish. And this is the little nail art look that I've gone for today. So I have used some Chance Taker and some Mover and Shaker from the new collection. So I think these are great little colours now coming into spring and everything. And this negative space nail art design is so fun. And I really feel like they always look fresh for a lot longer. So we are going to go right into this, guys, because I feel like there's going to be a lot of explaining when we're doing an enhancement, particularly for any of you that mightn't even do enhancements at the moment. If you've got any questions at any point, please leave them in the comment section. I'm going to do my best to get to them while I'm filming today. And if I don't, I will go back in and answer them later. And I know that there's a few of the Irish girls on that will help me out as well today. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to give the hands a quick little cleanse with cool blue. So it's a nice important part, particularly now when clients are super hygiene focused. And of course my little pump doesn't want to work. Oh, there we go. The focus is a bit blurry. How is it now, guys? Because it looks clear on my end, so I'm just hoping it's not my internet connection. Can you let me know? If it's not my internet connection, I can pull it up a little bit. Your light is making the video flash. Uh -huh. So I don't know how to fix that problem, maybe move it away a little bit. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Maybe if I zoom in, that would be a bit better, is it guys? There's a still a tiny little bit of flashing, I think, but I'm not really sure how to fix that. I think that could be because I'm using LEDs. 
but we just plough away anyway. And I'll keep a little eye on the comments section. So when we are starting an enhancement, we're going to do a dry pep. So I'm just going to come in here with my cuticle tool. And we're going to remove any non-living tissue. So I think everyone's saying there's a slight little bit of flashing, but it seems to be a bit better now that I've zoomed in. That's good. Sorry about that, guys. I'll try and fix the lighting. I'm trying out a new little setup and everything is all new. Okay, so once you've got your little cuticle pusher done, you can come in and check with a little curette and just make sure there's nothing hanging on in there. So I don't have too much cuticle today and I never do really, to be honest. I'm just one of those lucky people. I don't get much of a build up. Okay, so once you've had that done, I'm just going to give it, oh, sorry guys, I'm just going to give that a little cleanse away and make sure there's no little debris or anything there. I can still see there was a little bit of dry skin, but that's looking good. So next we're going to remove surface shine from the nail plate and we're going to use a 240 grit koala buffer for this. So you don't want to be too harsh with the natural nail. We're going to try and be as gentle as possible because we don't need to be super rough in order to get the plexi gel to stick to the natural nail. The plexi gel has really superior bonding and it's one of the best enhancements I've ever worn. I am quite lift prone so um, I was really impressed with this system. Have you tried it out yourselves? Let me know in the comments what you think of it if you have. So we are going to just pop our finger on the end and very gently going in the growth pattern of the nail we're just going to remove surface shine now you can see i'm not being super aggressive i'm not going for gold here and trying to take off loads and loads of nail i'm just going to be very gentle and just try and get off the surface shine but not too much else okay once we've done that I am going to scrub fresh this nail. And of course, my little pump doesn't want to work now either. Everything's going wrong today, but that's all right. I can see a few of you haven't tried it. Hazel has ordered a kit today. That's good. Susan thinks it's a fantastic system. I do too, Susan. I'm really impressed with this now. So I am going to scrub fresh this nail here and we're going to make sure you get right into those little lateral walls and the proximal nail fold. And Susan says quick, easy, great adhesion and most importantly safe. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much now isn't there about allergies and things. Knowing that you have a brand that you can trust makes all the difference. Alrighty, so guys, so that is your prep. So we're going to go straight in with our bonder. So your bonder does have solvents in it, guys. So what you want to do is just give it a little roll before you use it. You're not going to shake this product because if you shake it, we're going to be putting air bubbles into it and we don't want to do that. So just a little bit of a roll. And you don't need too much of this. Okay, so we're going to go straight into the center and we're not capping the free edge first. This is an enhancement system, so we're actually going to cap last. I'm just going to drain any excess product off the brush and very lightly just come in here 
and cap that. And then you're going to pop that into the lamp on the number one sachet. So I think these are the two colours we're going to use today and I think they just go really well together. They're nice and fresh and I think that's what we want. We just, we're so sick of the doom and gloom, aren't we? We need something to brighten it up. Can you just use tack from Light Elegance? Um, no, Sabrina. So we would only recommend sticking within the one system. If you were to use tack, there's a possibility that your next layer would not stick because they might not be compatible. They haven't been tested with each other. So I would try to use um, all C&D products if you're going to be using a Plexi Gel Enhancement System. Okay, so if you look at this little nail, I have a very deep C curve this way and I actually have a very deep C curve this way in most of my nails that's just the way they are naturally and if you have deep C curves what can happen when you put it into the lamp is you can get a little bit of a heat spike so what I'm going to do is I am going to pop a little layer of shaper on first so what this is going to do is it's going to help to protect my nail bed. So when I pop it into the lamp, it's not going to feel quite as hot. So this is a great tip for any of those clients who are a little bit heat sensitive. Um, if they've got high natural C curves in their nails, if their nails are damaged sometimes, particularly if they're all coming back from lockdown and they've been picking and chewing. Oh, that's just... So um, that could be... A really handy little tip for you guys. I know you're getting your news next week if you're in the UK if you're going back. Us in Ireland have a little bit longer to wait unfortunately. So we're going to apply a tiny little bit of shaper. So we're just going to do a tiny little bit here now guys. And you just want a very thin little layer. This isn't really going to add any strength or anything. All it's doing is it's protecting that nail bed from any little heat spike and we really want to protect the natural integrity of the nail. Okay, so once you've popped that in, you're going to set this on the 2B setting. So while I'm waiting for that to cure, I'm just going to have a little check through our comments and see how we're doing. Alison has asked, I liked your gloves. What kind are they? So these are black nitrile gloves, so they won't dissolve with your acetone or anything. You can get these from Sweet Squared, I believe, so have a little check. We have Rachel saying she loves the colours. I know, I love all of the new colours from the collection, even the yellow, and I'm not a yellow person at all, but I just love cream finishes. You can't beat it. And I think I've answered. So if you've got any questions, guys, just leave them there for me. And as I'm waiting for layers to cure, I will have a little flick through the questions and make sure I'm answering anything for you. So the next thing we're going to do once this little nail comes out is we're going to have loads of fun because Noreen's nails are probably the hardest nail shape to apply a form to. But, do you know, this is a great learning opportunity for you. A little bit of a test for me, but that's okay. So, once we've got that cured, my nail is now nice and protected. And if I were to accidentally touch off the nail as I'm applying the form, having the bonder and then the shaper on underneath is great because I could just cleanse that top surface and then I'm still ready to pop in with the next layer of builder. So that's another good tip for you guys. So we are going to use these new forms that I absolutely adore. So let's peel one off here. So this is what they look like. They're made of like a very unusual material. I've never seen a form made from anything like this. They're definitely got that st strength of like an aluminium tab. If you are old school uh, and you remember those aluminium, aluminium tabs and the dowels, um, which I always loved, but they were just so time consuming to do. Um, but they've got the flexibility of a paper form like they're kind of like this hybrid they're, they're really fabulous so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out this little center tab now this is personal preference but I do always like to put the tab back onto the back 
and I am going to leave a little bit of a gap here and you'll see why in just a second. But one of the reasons I like putting sticky side to sticky side with the tab is that means now I have a non-sticky bit so I'm not going to stick myself to everything when I am holding the form. We are just going to cut that little back tab open there now. And how many of you are doing enhancements and have you ever used forms before? Let me know in the comments section because I know these can be very daunting when you first see them. Um, there's a little bit to them. So I'm going to try my best to explain as clearly as I can. So if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. So do you remember we were saying that my nail has a very high C curve? So what happens is when you first place the form down, I'm just going to give this a little roll so it matches the C curve of the nail. So if you see these little dots down the centre, you don't want to be too um, aggressive with this. You just want a light little roll in between your thumbs. And when you place this onto the finger, if you have a nice high C curve, see when I turn it to the side, there's a little gap. So this is one of the problems of having nice C-curve nails. So I can see a good few of you. I struggle getting the apex foot forms. Well, hopefully, Sabrina, you might pick up a little tip or two today. Louise loves forms. That's cool. So when you're trying to get the form to sit back a little bit further into the nail like that, like for someone like me, what we need to do is we need to trim a little bit of excess here. So this C curve, as beautiful and deep as it is, is just too flat for my nail. So I usually find that the easiest way to do this is to cut out a little triangle here, right in the center. So I normally use my nippers for this. Um, so we are just going to Use this little centre line as your guide. So I just want to cut a little bit out here. And a little bit out here. So we've got this little triangle. And you'll see now when we try to fit this now again. See how that's sitting back a little bit further? So that's looking not too bad at all. So now you can see we've got loads of excess on the sides. And this is what I love about these forms. These little piano keys, you can really see where they need to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten up my little C curve because I can see he's gone a, a little bit wonky on me. So there we go. If I just use that line of light so it hits all of those dots, then I know we've got a nice straight little C curve. So I'm going to just have a little check here now and pop that on. And if I flip it to one side, you can see I'm just a little bit past the piano key and the other key. So we're just going to try and get that form there. It's one second, guys. Sorry. Sorry, Pat, can I get back to you later? So we've got a nice little fit there now. So we need to take away the excess here at the sides. So if you can see, I need to cut a little bit here and a little bit there. So that's what we're going to do next. Now you can cut these little bits out if you want, but I am just going to bend them up because that's what I always do anyway. Now, so let's have a little check and see how that fits. So that's looking good. If we take it to the side, you see how it gets right into that little edge? And the same on the other side, so that's looking good. So if you see here at the side, you can see the number one. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've got a nice tight fit and you're going to use almost like a little hinge motion. So let me hold it from this angle. So you kind of slide it in underneath 
and pop it up like that so that there's no little gap. I'm going to try and stick this to the finger without sticking it to the gloves, which is almost impossible, but I think we might manage it. So I'm going to stick it there. Okay, so then you're going to pop it this way and stick your number twos together, like so. If your number two tabs are looking a little bit off, then that's the sign that you really need to go back and check whether your form is fitted correctly. Like if you've got a lot of overlap, it just means it's not on straight, so there's no point in continuing. Just go back in and have a little check. Are those little dots down the center of your nail? They're probably not, then just have a little adjust. But if they're lining up good, you're ready to match up your number three little tabs. And then you can secure it all along this little perforated line here. Okay, so if we look from the front, my nail has quite a hooked nail to it as well. So the form always wants to point down a little bit. So I have to cheat a little bit. And what I do is I kind of grab these little bits so you can kind of unstick them slightly. And grab your number three tab and just kind of anchor it up a little bit so that it's nice and straight because I've got everything going on. I've got a lovely deep C curve, I have a hooked nail. So these are just what we're faced with. And I, I find it quite common on the, um, the index finger to have a hooked nail, like a lot of clients do. So that's a good little tip if you feel like your form is just pointing way too forwards, um, way too much downwards, I should say. Just unstick it from the finger and pull that little number three tab. So we just wanna make sure there's no little gap in there. That's looking good. Perfect. So if I'm looking at it down here, just make sure everything's nice and tight. And down the barrel looks good as well. Sometimes you can get a little bit of bulk here. And what I love about these forms is that you can just pinch them underneath and really slim that nail out very easily and effortlessly. And that's something that you can't do with um, with every form. That's why I really, really like these. Okay, I'm happy enough now with that. So Alison says, I find it's hard. I tried and it was not working. You make it look so easy. Honestly, Alison, this is hours and hours and hours of practice. It's easy for me to make it look easy um, because I've practiced so much. But trust me, there is a whole bin full of used forms that went totally wrong. So don't let that get you down. It is one of those things where you just have to try it and try it and try it. And once you get it right, it just clicks. So don't let that stop you. Practice really does make perfect. OK, so now we're going to come in with Builder. OK, now you don't shake Builder because we don't want to get any air bubbles into it and there are no solvents in this so we don't need to mix any of the mediums. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the bottle brush straight up and out so you don't want to be messing around um, like scraping it off in all different directions because that's going to put loads of bubbles into it and can you see at the moment we don't really have much bubbles so you just want to try and play with the brush as little as possible. And I'm just going to scrape off any excess like that now for you. Sorry if it's gone a bit blurry there, guys. It's just I think my hand's a bit too close to the camera. OK, so the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to put a very thin little layer all over this nail plate. And Builder is a good little bit more viscous, so it's a little bit thicker. And I'm going to show you what I've been doing lately that's really helping me as I put it into the brush. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Right. Hey Kelly, it will be saved. Don't worry. As soon as this video is complete, it goes up on the Sweet Squared Facebook page so you can watch it as many times as you like from the start. So you go in at a 45 degree angle like that, pull up towards the neck and scrape off. And what that's going to give you is a nice tiny bit of gel, not loads of it. 
I'm just going to scrape the back of that handle there because I can see there's a little blob. But it's quite difficult to pick up a small amount, so that's a good little tip. And now we're just going to sculpt out the free edge here. So there's two ways you can do this. You can do the reverse method, which I normally prefer, but just with the way the camera is and it's not focusing, um, I think I'm just going to sculpt like normal. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just roll some of that gel off onto the form, like so. And then making sure I've got, see the way like my brush isn't totally empty? I've got a nice little cushion of gel and I'm just going to slowly tease it up into one corner and as I'm getting to the edge I turn it on its side so that I can just use the little corner of the brush and then you can bring it back down and if you need to pick up more product you can go back in with that same technique of going in at a 45 degree angle to the neck of the bottle and if there's any gel there or if it's gone back into the bottle you can just dip it in slightly and that's a little bit too much so i'm just going to drain my brush we're going to go up into the other corner. So normally I actually do the reverse method guys but I know that the camera isn't going to focus if I do it that way but it's nice to see a different way as well. So what you just want to check is are your side walls established. So I'm just going to come out here and make sure we've got enough gel there on the side. So you want to make sure a straight little line all the way out here, have you got enough gel? And you can always apply a little bit more than what you need because you can always file away anything that isn't going to suit you. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So you can see I've missed a good bit here because this is the one that's facing away from the camera. And I'm like, I don't know what here, I'm like Houdini. A little contortionist trying to get the perfect angle for you guys and I know it's not quite right but we'll do our best okay so that's just a very thin flat platform that we've sculpted out the edge at Now what I might do is I might just clean up the little extension edge. So this is the backing of the form I've just used. These are great. I love um, using these. So do you know when you always use your disperse, it's best to use it on a pad like that. But if you place it on your towel, it just soaks straight into the towel. So by putting it onto a, the little plastic sheet, it's actually so handy. So I've been really enjoying using them and you'll see me using it as a disposable nail art palette a little bit later on as well. So when I pick up my disperse, I always place it on a little um, lint-free pad like this and I just rub my, um, my brush out over it. Then you can come in here. Oh, I'm out of shot. Sorry, guys. And you can just clean up that little edge there. Just a little bit. And we can always file anything off that we don't need anyway. So another good little tip is normally the gel always settles to the sides here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold it upside down with the nail pointing towards the table for a little bit. And we're going to let gravity do the work. That's going to pull all of that excess gel away from the side walls where we don't want it and into the centre of the nail where we do want it. Another good little tip is to cut these little fellas off before you put it into the lamp. Any other forms I've ever used in the past, if you did this, they would almost certainly pop open, but the stickiness of this is really nice. So I am going to pop this into the lamp for a flash cure on the number one button. So 
So I'm just going to have a little check and see, do we have any questions? Is this a self-leveling gel? Sabrina has said, yeah, absolutely. This gel really does the work for you. Um, and you're going to see that now in just a second. Um, well, I think we've got all the questions there. Okay, so we have freeze cured this. So let's just... Take that off. Okay. So now we're going to build up some of the structure. So if you see, it's super thin, very, very thin, but that's all we need and that's good. So now we're going to do the same thing with Builder. We're going to apply a thin layer all over that nail and you're going to see the self-leveling properties of this now we're going to pick up a nice little blob this time because we want to build some structure and we're going to place this down at the center of the nail because that's where we want the most of the structure and we can always move it from side to side so i'm creating a little sausage down the edge of the, the centre of the nail and if I turn it to the side you can already see it's starting to self-level so we can help to guide this into place but it definitely does a lot of the work for us so you can see I'm a little bit heavy on gel at the back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch off it slightly and just drag it down the nail and I would rather do two thin layers then one huge chunky layer. Okay, so I'm gonna set that into the lamp now on the 2B setting and we'll do a second layer for structure then afterwards. Doing your gel in thin layers is also a great way to stop a heat spike. And I can see we've got some questions there, so I'm just gonna to get to them now for you guys. I seem to have lost it. So Vicky said, what setting have you just cured that on? So when I sculpted the extension edge, I flash cured it on button one. So that's only a 10 second cure. And all I really wanna do is I wanna lock that gel into place. Um, and that's absolutely fine because now I've put on the second layer and I'm doing a full cure on 2B. So for that first little tiny little layer with the nail plate and the extension edge I've flash cured on one then I've built up another layer and I've cured that on 2B. I hope that's clear. And Paige said are you using the C and D lamp? Absolutely Paige. Um, to make sure that you get a full and proper cure C and D recommend that you do use their lamp and any C and D lamp will do. Okay so that has had a full cure now on button 2B. And let's have a little check and see where we are. Okay, so you can really see that my nail wants to slope down and that's just always the way it's always been. I just have a little bit of a hooked nail. So what I need to do is I need to build it up a little bit more here. You can see he's totally flat and sloping downwards. And Vicky said, would you complete one nail before moving on to the second nail? Um, no, I wouldn't. I could actually do um, two to four nails, depending on how quick you are. If you're a newbie, I would probably do one on each hand, if that makes sense, and just keep swapping them in the lamp. Um, so you could do one hand or one nail on the right hand, pop it into the lamp, pop, do one nail on the left hand, pop it into the lamp and rotate it that way. But if you're, if you're confident and if you're quick, you can normally get away with doing two, three or four nails on the one hand and then popping it into the lamp. Depends on your skill and your experience. Okay, so we're gonna build the nail up here now just a little bit more. So we're just gonna pop a tiny little bit more of that builder on, on a nice thin layer. And I like putting a little thin layer of gel on first because I just find it helps the, the gel to self-level as well. So I'm going to 
dip that brush back in and then pull it straight out so not messing around with it too much if you're messing around with the the brush too much that's how you get your air bubbles so I'm going to stay away from the back the half of the nail this time around because I want to build up my structure here so I'm going to roll that gel off there in the center and I'm going to mainly focus it on the top two thirds of the nail because that's where I want my structure so I'm being very gentle with this guys you almost want to tickle it into place you don't want anything, um, you don't want to push and press too hard. So if we turn this over, we can see it's still looking a little bit flat. So you can use my tip from earlier and that's just we're going to hold it upside down. And that's going to do the work for us. And if I flip it back over, we can see it's starting to self-level a little bit so we can go again. And just hold it for a few seconds okay so we're going to pop that into the lamp now again for a full cure on 2b i'm just going to have a quick check and see do we have any more questions vicky says thank you oh you're very welcome vicky no problem So I think once this comes out of the lamp, we'll start shaping it. The beauty of gel as well, guys, or any enhancement system, if you start shaping it and you still feel like you need a little bit more um, structure, there's nothing to stop you from having a little shape so that you can see where exactly you need that structure and then going on in a little bit. Okay, so that nail nav is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off that sticky top film. Perfect. Now you can use whatever file you like. I like the out black padded files. Um, so these are a 240 grit on these side, but you can use a 180 grit or higher. So we have a question just come in says, what would you recommend for someone that is nervous about starting Plexi in their salons? If you're nervous, um, I would start off with the shaper because the shaper is really easy to use. You can build very small extensions as well with the shaper. So that would be a great entry way to introduce it to your clients. You can also use it under C and D shellac. So the shaper has a thinner viscosity. So it does make it a little bit easier to use. So definitely try and start out with that. And then as your confidence grows, you can always move up to builder for a little bit of strength. So the first thing we're gonna do when we shape an enhancement is we're gonna look at our front form. So you can see my front form is absolutely horrific at the moment because this is one big ugly shape, but that's okay because we can fix it. So let me just see here now. I might actually just adjust the camera a little bit, guys, just to help me with this stage because it's super hard to try and file your own nails under camera. If I just turn it this way, I think we might have a better chance. Bear with me. Okay. Can you see that okay? Susan has asked, what would you charge on top of a normal shellac service for a plexi overlay and again for a rebalance? I would charge the exact same as what I'm already charging for an overlay with any other system and the same for the rebalance. You could even charge a little bit more if you wanted. You could charge 10% extra as this is a new product and new technology, but obviously it's going to be um, completely up to you. So if you're already offering enhancements, I would use your current prices um, as your guideline. Okay, so I'm going to fix this shape first now because this is driving me insane. So let me just see if you can see it. Yeah, we've definitely got too much length so I can afford to take a little bit down. So what you want to do is you just want to get your shape first. Now oval always suits me best. So if you're ever wondering what's going to suit your clients the best, you're going to go by the shape of the cuticle lines. You can see I have very rounded cuticles, therefore a lovely rounded shape is going to suit me best. 
So I'm going to take the nail back just until I've got the length that I want. And I normally start off just as I would as if, if I was doing a square. I'm just going to check that for length. I think that's still a little bit too high. So I got a little bit carried away with the length. That's okay. Yeah, I think that's good. So, when you're trying to do an oval, what we're going to do is we're going to do it like a square, so when you can just see the total back of the file, and then you're going to start to slowly rock it under the nail. And that's going to start to erode those corners. What file are you working with? Sabrina asks. I'm working with an out black padded file. I like the padded files for the for gel. I just find um they're they're just nice to work with and they give you less flat spots. But you can use any file you like that's 180 grit or higher. Okay, so let's just have a little check there. Perfect. So next thing I'm going to turn the nail this way. I'm going to just give it a little wipe. Get rid of some of that dust. And I just want to straighten out my lower arch here a little bit. So I am just going to run the file along there and straighten that up. Do the same on this side. And now I'm going to start to do my little filing routine. So my filing routine follows the C and D method. We're going to thin out this side first. Sorry guys, now let me see if I can get you a better angle because this is almost impossible. Um, what's the best way to do this? I hope you can see this guys. We're just going to come down this angle here and what I'm doing is I'm making sure the little sides are parallel now with my side walls. I can see my lower arch here just needs to be filed out a little bit. Okay, so I can see my overall nail now. He's a little chunky, but that's okay. So if I look down the barrel of the nail, you can see he's super chunky we're going to fix him. So we're going to thin out our extension edge by beveling downwards. And then slowly thinning out the back. Have a little check so this might actually be the worst nail i've ever done in my life but how bad we can still fix it so i can see we've got a little bit of chub right here that needs to be sorted out and that's very blurry isn't it so i'm just gonna thin this out here
Okay, so he's looking a little better. Perfection, Alyssa says, oh my God, it's far from it, my love, far from it. But you know, we're all human. And uh, when you're at home and you're at your desk and you've got all your stuff laid out, everything goes perfectly, doesn't it? But when someone's watching you, it's a different story. Even the way with clients, if, if you're ever doing stamping or anything like that, you're practicing on your tips and it's flawless. And then it takes you 10 times to get one finger with a client that happens to anyone else. So I'm just going to make this a little bit more oval. He's still looking a little square under camera. We're going to give that a little cleanse. Yeah, that's looking much better now, isn't it? So he doesn't look like a chunky monkey nail anymore. That's what we want. Okay, so if you remember these little plastic backed things from the form, I'm going to use these now as a disposable palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decant some of this mover and shaker just onto my palette. And I'm also going to decant at the same time some of this lovely blue colour called Chance Taker. Now the reason that I'm decanting the blue at this stage is I actually want it to thicken up because this is going to make our job a little bit easier in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to make sure that nail is nice and clean before we put any shellac on it. So I'm just going to make sure I give it another little wipe because we don't want any fuzzies into it, ruining our lovely work. And then I'm going to just wait for that to dry for a little second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stripey brush from Light Elegance. I really like this striping brush because it's super thin. And it's got a lovely little point on it so I find this is really handy for um, for drawing those little lines I just find I've got loads of control with it I think this might have been part of a set I'm not a hundred percent sure but I do use this one a lot and the way you pick up your polish is really going to help um, with the way that your line is so what you want is an even distribution of the shellac the whole way through. So if I run it through there, do you see the way how that's got a big blob on the end? Like that's not going to give you um, a, a nice line. Kelly has said, what did you wipe with? I just wiped with some IPA or Disperse if you're in um, the UK, just to make sure that the nail was nice and clean. So we want to have our product even the whole way out. So do you see there's no little blob at the end? That's what you want. And all we're going to do is we're going to draw a little line from the corner here up to the edge of where your natural smile line meets. And you don't have to draw this with a striper, like this is optional. I just find it easier to draw this line first if you're handy enough and you can freehand it away, by all means do. But once you've got that done there, I normally find it then it's a lot easier to come in with the shellac bottle and you've got a guide of where you can go up to. We're just going to cap the extension edge here now for a nice seal. Am I in shot? I am. And we're just going to fill in anything along here. You just want a nice thin coat. And I like to use the striper brush to get into the sides as well. If you've got someone with really deep C curves like me, you can use your striper brush to come in and finish that little line up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to pop that into the lamp on the 2S setting because we are now using shellac. And 
And I'm just going to have a little read through the comments and see if I missed any questions. If you've got anything, just leave them there for me, guys. No, I think everything has been answered. So do you do a lot of negative space nail art in your own salons, guys? Let me know. They're super popular in my salon. I think people love them just because they look so intricate, but often they're actually really easy to do. So why I've left this blue out here is we want the solvents on the shellac to thicken as well, so that when we come in and we draw our little line for our nail art, we're only going to need one coat of it. If your shellac has been on a little palette, um, then it's um, it's easier to draw the lines. So Kelly has asked, is Plexi Gel always on setting 2B? Yeah, so you're going to always cure your um, Plexi Gel on 2B unless you're just freeze curing it and then you can cure it on button 1. I've cured this layer on 2S as we're now using shellac. So I hope that's clear. So I'm just going to come in here and quickly paint a second coat. And we don't need to redraw that line. It'll still be handy for us to follow as a guide. Once you've got that straight line, I just think it's so easy to come in and be a little bit speedier. And especially when you've got all of the, um, all your nails to do. Am I still in shot? I am. Okay, so that's looking like a nice even coverage of the second coat. So here's a good tip for you guys. If you're doing this in the salon and you're painting all five fingers, do you see how that still looks a tiny little bit streaky? What I would do is I would just wait a minute, like I would paint five fingers and then without putting it into the lamp, I would come back to the first finger and all I would do is I would run my brush ever so lightly out over it again. And I find that just kind of gives you better coverage so I'm not really adding any extra product. There might be a little bit of product on the brush, but I just find it gives you, you know, you don't have to do loads and loads of coats then. So I'm going to pop that back into the lamp on the 2S setting. And next we're going to come in with this blue colour. Sabrina's loving this nail design. Cool, you'll have to try it out, Sabrina, and let me know. someone says great tip yeah because you know especially when um we're going to be in such a rush when all these clients are coming back that can like i know it's only two minutes and it's two minutes per hand but you know yourself that's the difference between you eating a sandwich or not so all of these tiny little tips to to make that service just that little bit quicker um can, can really make a difference in the salon so I am going to clean off my little striping brush here just with some isopropyl alcohol or disperse. And I'm just going to pop some on a lint free wipe and give that a little wipe just to make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, now that that's cured, we're going to come back to the blue and we're going to pick up that blue. Do you see how much thicker that is because it's been sitting out onto the the table for a little bit that's what you want it's going to be so easy to work with now so much easier you're going to make sure you've got a nice even distribution throughout the whole brush and for this one I think we're just going to do a line down the center but you can pick your line wherever you want so start off at the point push down on your brush and try and keep the same pressure throughout the whole nail And you can come back in then and just finesse it. But you see the coverage on that, guys, because it's been sat out on that little plastic um, backed thing. It's really going to make it so much easier to work with. Like you won't have to do two coats of this. Like the one coat just looks fab on its own. So again, it's gone super wonky on camera, but that's OK, because now I can show you how to fix it. So we can see he's super skinny here. So what I'm going to use is the tip of my brush and I'm just going to barely tap into that shellac and drag it down. Very, very light pressure, like hardly putting any pressure at all on the brush. 
and that's going to help to straighten that out and I can see he's a little bit skinny at the back so I just want to barely touch off it and that will make him there and I did that mistake totally on purpose so I could show you how to clean it up mm -hmm. or maybe not maybe I'm telling a fib who knows so I've got some IPA here guys and I've got a little clean up brush this is the Lacente G1 and all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to run that over so if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world we can always clean it up very easily so I'm going to pop that back in onto the 2S setting and we are almost done. We are just going to finish off this service now with top coat. So a question I often get asked is can I finish this off now with the C&D protector top coat? And the answer is it's not recommended to. You're better off coming in with your C&D shellac in either original or Jura Force. And the reason for that is that's the last medium that we've used. So... If I was just doing a naked plexi gel nail, of course we could come in with this protector and apply it and that would be absolutely fine. But if we were to put this out over C&D shellac, there's a chance it could crack. So it would almost look like that shattered glass effect and it could chip and you could get a little bit of service breakdown and obviously we don't want that. So to get the maximum result for your clients, we are gonna come in with C&D original um, top coat. So we're just going to wait for this little nail now to be cured. And that's it guys, we're just going to top coat it and we are done. So if you've got any questions for me, just leave them in here. And I'm going to get to them there now in just a second. So I'm going to just cut the extension edge. And I love seeing top coat go on because you'll even notice yourself, guys, if you feel like you've got any little bit of patchiness or anything like that, it just makes such a difference when the top coat goes on. And now we're going to pop that on the number three setting in the LED lamp. So we just wait for that there now to be cured and I'm going to have a little check Page says I didn't know that I thought if there was builder under the shellac then that top coat would work do you know what it might work but it might not and I personally um, wouldn't take the risk especially when it's so easy to put on a, a shellac top coat it's going to take the exact same amount of time and there's nothing worse than a client phoning you up the next day or even a week later and being like oh look what's happened to my nails particularly if you spent ages doing a gorgeous nail art design on them so yeah for just to make sure um that you're not going to get any service breakdown always finish with the last mediums top coat so if you're just doing plexi gel on its own that's absolutely fine just put the um the plexi gel top coat on but if you've embellished it with shellac definitely go in with your shellac original or jora force and that's just going to make sure nothing's going to happen it you see shellac is a soft gel so what can happen is you can get a little bit of movement underneath that top coat and it won't happen everybody's nails but it, it, of course the one time you would do it would be the one time it would crack do you know what i mean so just to be on the safe side i'd always go with your shellac top coat so we're just going to wipe this away with any disperse and there we go guys we've got our cool little negative nail art design done what do you think would you use this in the salon would your clients like it let me know so I will stay on for an extra little minute just in case there's any questions that are waiting to come through. If you're watching the replay, please feel free to still pop your question in. I will check this in the next day or two and make sure that I answer anything. It's been an absolute pleasure, guys. Thanks for staying with me for so long. I can't believe that took nearly an hour. Um, but thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come and watch me. Um, I hope you get a chance to try this out for yourselves. I really hope that we're all back and we're up the walls busy doing nails very, very soon. Rona says, hi, just tuned in and missed this. Will this be available to view later? Absolutely. As soon as this is over, give it a few minutes and it's going to go straight up on the Sweet Squared page. So don't worry about that at all. Louise says, I know one of my clients will love that. Awesome, Louise. And Vicky says, thank you so much. Well, that's great, guys. I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much. And I will chat to you all soon.